Yes, yes, I mean to say what here at Cumulus Media, we are broadcasting live from Radio 1039 in New York. This guy right here hailing all the way from Chicago, BJ the Chicago Kid. Hello, what's how are what's you? Good, what's good, I'm good, how are you? I'm good. This is actually our first time talking, I feel like. Yeah, yeah we've never so. had a conversation, so I'm excited yeah, about this. Let's do it. I've been following you for a long time. You're very talented. Thank you, thank you, thank you. You know, your music precedes you, so that's a that's good thing dope. always. Yeah, of course, of course. So um, you put out your debut album. Now you're following that up with your sophomore album, mm -hmm. correct? Yep, yep. So they say that your sophomore album is the hardest album to make. Is that true? No, it's not the hardest album to make. Um, I think um, it's just a... Growing from the first album, you should always have something to talk about. You yeah. Know, it should give you some kind of leeway into the second album. So I don't know who says that, but <laughs> whoever they is, you know, they say a lot of right. stuff. Right. They say all this stuff. <laughs> they say a lot of stuff. I never the met trolls. Day before. <laughs> yeah, I never met the days before, but yeah, I heard that too. But nah, it's it's, it's, it's been a um, beautiful process. I'm, I'm excited for it to be ready. Well, apparently I think what happens is you spend your whole life creating this body of work that finally mm -hmm. comes out and then it comes out and it's like, what happens now? You don't have your whole life to create the second body of work. So, I mean, and if I you're not a true creative, that might be uh, the you know, whole whack problem. part. The only whack part I think about that is if it take your whole life to make 12 songs, you should switch lives. <laughs> You should at least have 50, 24. If you, got, if you spent your whole life just to make your first 12, go do something else. That's why I don't get who they is. That's why it never makes sense. I mean, I can sit here and make a song about anything in the room right now and sit here long enough, it'll really make more sense and more sense and you break it down. So I think um, if you're ready for this, you're going gonna to find a way to make it happen like anything else. It's not going to be nothing to stop you, yo. So it's you not, freestyle? Not stop you. You I, I have freestyle before, yeah. I mean, just I've written songs every kind of way I possibly can. Um, but you know, whatever suits the particular situation, that's what I do. Right. Yeah. So, eleven twenty three is an album that's coming out. Yep, yep. This is your birthday. Yeah. I'm hearing. So you're a Scorpio. First day of Sagittarius. Oh, first okay, day. okay. So, you're, so you're borderline. I, I, yeah, 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 yeah. yeah. <laughs> but but for it to be the first day, I get that a lot. So I now nah, yeah, same thing. Yeah. Do you have Scorpio tendencies? People say uh, people on the borderline do. So I don't I don't know. I would have to hear from somebody I'm hanging around all the time. They right. tell me, yeah. Yeah, I'm a Taurus, so I have a lot of Scorpio friends. <laughs> <laughs> so I know all about y'all. Yeah, yeah. Well, Sagittarius, we're we going we gonna to stand up for them, though. That's why I'm rocking All out. right. Yeah. So your first single is called Time Today. Yeah. So tell me about that. Why this song? Um, Time Today is kind of like a, a pickup off a song that I did previously called Rather Be With You. Mm -hmm. um, it's about the person that lives the busy life, whether it's work, whether it's family, whether it's personal. But um, it seems like they're always on the move. But to the opposite, um, it seems like they're having so much fun running the town, doing what they do. But it's like none of that means nothing when it comes to being with you. So time today, fast forward, is the flip of that on the side of, okay, all this time you say I didn't have, mm. I got it today. Right. Yeah. So you're basically making time for the person that deserves the time. Absolutely. You think there can be balance in work and pleasure? Like yeah, I think so. Relationships? Yeah, I think so. Um. I mean, even if it's you saying the funniest thing that happened on your lunch break at work and you text me and you say, hit me later, it's still a communication. Right. I think it's a way to do everything. It's just according to how people want to do it. Do you have a, are you in a relationship right now? Uh, nah, not really. I, I love people, but I'm not in a relationship. <laughs> you love people? Yeah. That's a great way of putting it. It's honest. Because <laughs> I would think it's really hard to keep a healthy relationship when you're moving around so much. Yeah, and to... Um, you fall faster than you stay a lot of times these days. So I just tread lightly, G. I ain't afraid to to tap into my emotions uh, and feelings. That's a song. See, there you go. Now you free. Now you <laughs> Now you see. Now you there. See, she <laughs> there. <laughs> that's a song, though. But, like, not, it see, is. It's, it, 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 but why, yeah. why, do, why do you fall someone and not stay? Because everybody's good in the beginning. But when the guard gets down, that's what determines how long you're staying. When you start to see the true colors, what was lied about, what is now uncovered, what they were trying to cover. Yeah, you get to see all that kind of stuff. And if it's truth that's been there the whole time, you're staying. If mm. you if what you fell in love with is really what's still here six months later, a year later, who wouldn't stay? If you fell mm. in love with, with that, you know? So a lot of times... um. I would say most of the time, just even from, and it's not just my experience. I've I got homies that, you know, they 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 find out it's it's different six months later from what they were saying. Those this it's not the consistency isn't there. Mm -hmm. <laughs> so when that changes, you know, it's just life, man. But I think it's more now these days than back in the day. Uh, you talk about loyalty a lot. 
Oh, for sure. Yeah. I, do you yeah. have it tattooed somewhere or something? No, nah, I don't have a okay. tattoo my loyalty <laughs> anywhere. But it's 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 just real. Like I'm um I'm big off um off family and like um like mob shit. Like that's just that like those rules to me are um very sufficient when it comes to being a stand up person. Now when it comes to other things, that's a little bit out. But I'm loyal. That's what I know. Um, loyalty is even when you don't understand, still being there. Mm. That's what. That's when a lot of other people tap out. That's hard. We we tap out when we don't understand stuff. Right. Or we we just throw it to the side and really talk about it like we know about it. and We don't know anything about it. We just shun it. Right. So yeah. I think it's the it should be the opposite of that. Loyalty is like if I'm down, I'm down even when I don't understand because I know you're gonna come back and clear this up because mm. I'm loyal. And you feel me that way. So that's what loyalty is to me. Like, you, it stand down even when you don't know what's going on. I think a lot of the times people have their criteria of what they want from any relationship, a friendship. It could be a, a you know, a, a father-mother relationship, a family relationship, a personal relationship. And what happens is when people don't fit inside of what this criteria is, it's like, oh, no, 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 you're not meant to be in my life. Mm-hmm. I'm just going to remove you. Yeah. Is that the right way to think to think about our relationships with people? Um, I don't... I, I, I handle people differently. Hmm. Some people show you how you should treat them before you even say anything to them. Mm. Man, take what they show you. Accept that. Receive that. Because you want them to be somebody else so bad, and you, you're going to be the one looking stupid and silly at the end. When they when they show you who they are, accept that. Okay. We want people to be different so bad, and we it's like that's, how, that's the first step of getting hurt right. on your account, wanting them to be somebody who they're not. You yeah. know what I'm saying? Like they showing showing you who they are. Accept that. Mm-hmm. Yeah. Are these the themes on the album? What are the themes on the album about? Nah, nah. We just got to talk about life for real, okay. for real. Um, it's no particular thing for the album. You kind of hit that. Eleven twenty three. It's a celebratory album from right. where we left off. A lot of beautiful things happened in the first round. Um, we picking up where we left off. We extending the celebration. Um, some of the best things for myself has been given to others. Honestly, that feeling is amazing. Mm. Um. To understand you really done something that really took very little of you, but it made the, it, it meant the world to someone else. Moments like that is what um allow you to understand um that blessings come in many different ways and how blessings come and go. You know mm-hmm. how you supposed to handle and be a blessing sometimes. And I think um all of that kind of coincides to uh, me giving a gift with my birthday name on it. But at the end of the day, I'm giving some to the people I've always loved doing music. But um the creative the creative side on this and the the um how could I say it um the details in this album is is super super unique so um every album is gonna sound different every album is gonna have a different vibe but it's still BJ. What do you think your place is in R and B? Being BJ, yo, I ain't worried about nobody else. So mm-hmm. I think that's the first step of understanding my place. Um, I I don't try to sing like other guys. I don't try to get down like them. I'm simply me. Um. Most of them that know me, they understand that. And I think that gives me room to celebrate and salute them if they sound and what they do and their accomplishments and, and their gift as well. Um, Marvin wasn't trying to sound like Ron Isley, so when he mm. saw him, he could give him dap and say, what's up? They could really speak. They could really have a connection. And I think um, when somebody's trying to be like you, it's a little animosity. Somebody's going to feel something. It's going to come out. It's going to, yeah, so it's like be yourself, man. Originality, um, distinctiveness. That's what. That's the first step of understanding your place. Right. Yeah. Yeah. There's like R and beef now, which was never a thing. <laughs> I still don't know what it is. <laughs> like I don't recall R and B guys fighting like back in the day. I, I could be just, wrong. I haven't just, been on the earth for that. Let's long. just be honest. Like if you're gonna fight, let's fight. And get it. and we don't gotta get we don't gotta do it with our thumbs. We could go somewhere, fight with no cameras and get on over with. And our differences are settled. If not, shut up. Mm-hmm. Make your music and make your money. It's not that like, social media encourages that and I hate it. Because it makes people feel like they could say things that they never would say face to face or they never would have had the boss to say if they was around that person. And it gives them a stage, it gives them lights, it gives them a band, it gives them a dressing room, it gives them a wardrobe, it makes everybody feel like they could be a star from wherever they are. Mm. And it's a beautiful part, but I think when people abuse it and they begin to have stuff like come into a, a game that we really don't even have, like, oh, she wasn't in no beef with nobody, you know what I'm saying? Uh, Pick somebody from my past that we loved. They wouldn't even beef with no, like, if there was no arm beef, I think that shit is so corny, man. Mm-hmm. And people just need to wise up. Make your money. Because at the end of the day, man, um, you do something so bad because you feel some way momentarily about another artist, you can't even go overseas, bro. 
Now now you got a felony on your record because it done went too far. You can't even go make money abroad. You don't even know what euros look like but from a computer or somebody bring you something back. Like, understand this is a business, man. People are watching. Even though you can, um, it's a free business, you can have fun. Guys, you smoke weed on your job and all that. Yeah, you do all that. But you cut up in the wrong way mm. and see how far I get you. It's still wrong. That's, that's why I, it's like the mob to me. Um, you know who I'm married to. You touch my wife and you see what happened. Mm-hmm. I don't got to say nothing. It's rules that don't need to be said that we all know. And I feel like that's what we all should abide by, out of respect. And that's love. That's loyalty. That's happened to you? Nah, man, I wouldn't even be here right now. Okay. I've never been married, but I don't play No, like I'm that. saying, has that happened to you where someone has, you know, said something on the internet and you were like... Nah, but I mean, people say stuff on the internet all the time, but I could tell the people that would say something to me on the internet is some kid behind his mom's PC mm-hmm. in his room and he has to go sleep in that bed at a certain time of night i'm a i'm a grown man so i don't pay attention to it. i laugh at this stuff right but if, okay shot down nah, it's just for real <laughs> and you gotta know you got if you know the reality you wouldn't react like that right right simple as that like if you know who's really on the other side of this phone talking shit would you really react like that right, right. and if like you know i was just in your city you hey if if nobody knows where i'm at you know where i'm at it's on a flyer Come holler at me. Mm. You know, it, it, that's the thing. You can't hide when you do this. Like, mm-hmm. you have to promote yourself, right? Right. So they're going to know you're going to be at Highline Ballroom tonight at 9 o'clock. It's not. It's, so it's like, yo, just, man, just do your job, man. Let's be smart adults and let's have fun in this thing that all started from us just taking a chance from singing and rapping. And, you know, let's let's actually see how the best of it happens from that. But all that stuff don't involve right. this type of game. Man. It's, it, it's not needed to me. All right, Chi-Town. Yeah, I up. got a question about Kanye. What do you think about the Chi-Town connection? What do you think about the Sunday services? I've been a couple times. Mm-hmm. I know. That's I like what I'm it. asking. How you know I've been? Because I, I read a lot. I know. Uh, they don't. My, 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 I'm not, I don't report. I don't sign no list <laughs> when I go. But no, I simply um I have friends that um sing in the choir, I have friends that play in a band. Mm-hmm. Um, I don't know why it wouldn't be an incredible situation. All they're doing is praising God, bro, in the coolest, more unique, fun ways. Simply that they don't raise no offering. It's I mean, what's bad about it? I don't know what the media is trying to turn it into, but y'all whack as hell for that. Some people don't like that he's selling merchandise, like the fifty dollars socks. He sold merchandise at Coachella. He don't sell them on Sunday services. Okay. I don't got nothing to do with that. I'm mm-hmm. not his spokesperson. But I enjoy the two times that I went. I had an amazing time and um I felt better when I left there. Mm-hmm. And that's that's what I went for. But he don't sell just let me clear that up. He do not sell merch on Sundays. Mm-hmm. He sold merch at Coachella. I have nothing to do with that. I'm not on Kanye's team. I salute my brother. I'm happy he's doing something to make his spirit better. Right. And um, we still make mistakes, so it's all good. I, but I, I enjoyed myself. I really did at the Sunday service. I, I like it, too. Myself. I feel inspired when I watch it. I was touched by it. I cried at one point. I was That's so beautiful. moved. That's I'm beautiful. watching it on the screen crying. So um, I'm I'm on the same side as you. Yeah, I saw, I saw, Everybody sells yeah. merchandise at Coachella, though. Yeah, but that's that's the only... Now, if he sold it on Sundays at his thing, then that's another conversation we probably would have. But he sold it to Coachella. I don't, I don't know the rules. They probably said he had that much. I don't know. I don't, who am I? <laughs> I'm BJ the Chicago kid. I'm just happy that <laughs> he's not only just finding a, a better spiritual path for himself, but he's sharing it with others. That's the most unselfish thing that you can do. Right, right. Um, he don't know everything that his people is around him, that the people around him is going uh, through, or the people that's coming to that Sunday service to to um, participate or to um, sit and you know for healing or whatever the case may be. But through song, I think um, it's very it's very necessary for the people that are allowed to go because some people don't want to go to a church where they looked at and it's like imagine going to a church. And you really come there f- to get something from God, but people staring at you as if you're an item because you're a celebrity. Mm. That sucks. Right. You're not even allowed to get yeah. free as you want to be or whatever the case may be. I think it's really cool for him to have a place where he's not talking like the pastor. No, he's not. He don't He don't talk. He knows, there's no talking. Yeah, there's no deacon. There's no offering. That's, it's right. music. That's it. Right. For people to hate on that, y'all whack. Y'all whack for that. Y'all whack. And it's it's a, it's a for God. It's about God. Mm-hmm. Um. Next Sitting time I'm in church, please no photos. This has been a sentiment that he's had for a while. Yeah, and too, honestly, um, when you go to church, 
sometimes the healing could take place just from listening and closing your eyes and just really meditating or just understanding the words that are being saying or thinking about what, you know, it, it, it's it's so many different ways. And I think because he do it like this, it allow you to do that without any repercussion, without anybody giving you any flack, without anybody uh, making you feel weird. I think it's a pure, honest up and down relationship between you and, and 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 God, and I think that is beautiful. To eliminate everything else that make other people not go to church, mm. and y'all still condemn him for that, y'all whack, man. Mm. Ain't no offering. He feed people out of his own pocket. They be having food after service sometimes. Yeah, I'm. That we don't we don't pay for that. Yeah, what kind of like food are they, is he feeding bomb people? Bomb food from chicken, uh, grits, shrimp, all yes. that. They, yeah, I'm working on Sunday. Yeah. Can you bring me but next I'm, time? <laughs> <laughs> but I'm just letting y'all know, like. <laughs> Like, what kind like, of drinks will we like, drink? Like, we drinking like, like, wine? Yeah. No, it's not that. Okay. Water, juices, Water, tea, juice. coffee, whatever you want. But it's not. He holding it down, and I respect what he's doing. And I respect in a strong way. Because anything that can make somebody not go to church is not the things that's there. So to eliminate all of that stuff, it's just simply on you. And this is not open for everyone to come. But for those that come, it eliminates everything that would scare you away. So um, I think it's a beautiful thing. It's a beautiful time to do it. And like. No church really have church outside, like in nature. You can right. actually preven. Like I think his creative has allowed that to go another level, and I think that's super dope, man. So shout out to my brother, Yay, man. I love you, dog. It's all good. Man. I love Don't that. worry about him, man. Don't worry <laughs> about him, dog. Four time uh, Grammy nominated. Yeah. Are you of the school that it's like, damn, I was robbed, or damn, I'm so great grateful that I was nah, nominated? I'm from a school of damn. I just got to work harder. Okay, that's it. Um, I don't really pay attention to other artists and what they do, I, and I, that allows me to really deepen the depth of who I am, tap into my creative a little more. My do's and don'ts, too, you know? Um, when you're drawing, that's why the erase are on there, because sometimes you go somewhere you don't want to go, like, ah, that ain't so cool when you erase it, you know? But when you're creating, you can't be afraid to use that eraser or be afraid to know that it exists so you can go, you're going to mess up. Yeah. And I think um, not being afraid to mess up is a part of my victory. Mm. Straight up. Last question. You performed that Barack Obama's farewell address. Yeah. That's amazing. And we just we, we performed at that and we performed they just LA just renamed um Rodeo. Rodeo uh -huh. on the other side, but it's Rodeo on the hood side. Right. Um <laughs> they renamed it um Obama, Obama Boulevard. We actually participated in the, the unveiling of that too. So um we love Obama on this side. Is man. he picking you? How is that happening? God's picking me every <laughs> <Okay>. time. <laughs> I'm like, did Obama say I God's want him? Me. Nah, it's, um, the first time, the the, the 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 last speech, yes, he did pick me. Um, what an honor! Incredible, right? What does he say to? What did he say to you? Did when he I, say when anything? I, when, I, when I finally met him, he was like, "That was you singing." <laughs> but I was stuck, right? My manager, my manager was like, hey, "He's talking to you, like say something." I was like, uh, "Yeah, that was me." <laughs> I was stuck, y'all. Honestly, you haven't met the coolest person in the world, for real, for real. You ain't met the epitome of swag until you met Barack Obama. I'm just being real. He's the coolest guy on the face of the earth, man, period, just like that. But that was one of the biggest milestones of my life, doing it in Chicago, doing it for his farewell speech, last right. speech as president. Um, man, it was totally magnificent, man. It, it's up there with the, with, with the Grammys, man. Right. Yeah. Well, I could talk to you all day, but I know you got to go. 1123. 1123. That's the album. Time Today is the song. Right now. You know what I'm saying? Mm hmm But this has really been cool for me. I, I thank you. We, we talked about a little bit of everything. The album. Yeah, life, that's kind of me. You know, we, I, we, no, can, I dig we it. can go anywhere. I'm you with know? that. I'm with that. I'm with okay, that. I'm okay. With that. I'm we with all that. right now. Yeah, yeah, yeah. For sure. <laughs> Make sure you support this man. He's doing the damn thing. He's talented. Thank you for watching. I mean to say what? Here at Cumulus Media, Radio 1039, New York. Kill R and beef. <laughs>